This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Decade of Fire. That's the name of a new documentary that takes us back to the 1970s, when the Bronx faced a near constant barrage of fires that displaced almost a quarter million people and devastated an entire area. The Bronx was burning, but who was lighting the match? Decades of Fire, Decade of Fire tells this story. This is the trailer. We grew up in rubble. We grew up with burnt out decay all over us. The South Bronx was burning down around us, and nobody seemed to know why. Everything south of the Cross Bronx Expressway, they just let it burn, but nobody gave it there. And all of a sudden, neighborhoods just went foosh, gone. Nobody's aware of the fact that we got a city dump right here in, in, in the backyard. How could city government allow this to happen? Who was in charge? Why? The story we were told, the story the whole world was told, was that the fires were somehow our fault. But we didn't burn the Bronx. We were the ones who saved it. I said, no, wait a minute. I have to make my move right now. The reason we're trying to do all these things is to show an example to the rest of the people in the neighborhood that if you just try, you could make a lot better neighborhood. If no one else wants to fight, we'll fight. And I'm sure that I could get all the women in the Bronx to go out there and fight. Can in, come in no, and wave a wand and do this. We tried to get money from the city to renovate a building. We got red tape, two, three years maybe. Two, three years, there might not be a Kelly Street. This story is not just about the Bronx. There are places like this in every major city in America. Places that everyone has given up on, except for us. We came from this so-called terrible place but we would never leave it behind. Decade of Fire airs next week on PBS, where, for more, we're joined by the two guests here in the studio who made this film happen. Vivian Vasquez Irizarry is the film's co-director and co-producer, born and raised in the Bronx. She describes her community burning, in part through her own family story. And Gretchen Hildebrand is co-director and co-producer of Decade of Fire as well. Vivian, let's begin with you. Um, the poignant story of your family, and then what happened in the Bronx. Tell us that story. So, I grew up in the South Bronx during the 1970s. We had a great community. Um, you know, uh, we thought it was normal. We thought it was natural. After we thought it, meaning the fires, right, living in the destruction, uh, that's how we grew up. As I got older, I began to realize that something was really wrong, and uh, I began to work with young people and decided, let's teach history to young people about the Bronx, and uh, realized that, wait a minute, something was wrong. We were always told that it was our fault for the destruction of the Bronx. That's the narrative we've always been um, given, that it was the people of the South Bronx who burned it. Eighty percent of the Bronx burned down? Eighty percent of our housing stock was destroyed. And we also experienced 40 fires, on average, a day and night. You talk to people who grew up back then, and they will tell you they still remember the smell. And they still remember what they needed to do in case there would be a fire, putting shoes out near the front door, maybe sleeping with your shoes on, maybe making sure that people in the neighborhood were always aware that any minute now there would be a fire. And, and, of course, many of those were um, uh, arson fires, that the landlords themselves set to be able to collect insurance money uh, because they, they weren't getting enough income from the rents. Uh, you also focus on the reduction of fire services uh, to the community by the city government at the time of New York's financial crisis. Could you talk about that? Yes. We talk about the fires, uh, but we also reveal what led to those fires. And it wasn't 
that all of a sudden the fire, the Bronx began to burn. You know, we reveal that we experienced redlining, which really starved the community of resources to support buildings that were already pre-old. They were already, you know, in bad shape. Uh, we talk about urban renewal, which crowded over 150,000 people into the South Bronx. We talk about the cuts of services, including firehouses. All of those factors led to the fire. So we, we characterize the fires as the vulture effect that occurred um, with policies that were made, humanly made, to the community beginning in the 1950s and 60s. And when 60s. you talk about the 150,000 people that were poured into the South Bronx, they were being displaced from Manhattan, as Manhattan was being gentrified by Robert Moses and Herman Barillo, and they were being pushed into the South Bronx, right? Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. We, you know, 100, these people who were already poor became displaced into neighborhoods that created even a greater poverty effect for the community. Let's go back to the documentary Decade of Fire. We used to tell our landlord, don't abandon us, because we can live anywhere else. My children were all born here, and, and we're trying to get our lives together and make something better for them. The sense that I get, and there's this internalized um, sense of, um, of guilt, and of shame for not being able and not working hard enough or not having what it takes to, to, to elevate oneself out of that circumstance. We did blame ourselves because that's what, what we, that's what we internalize, wait, because we're living in it. Why are we doing this mm -hmm. to ourselves? You know, um, it, it was complicated. And it's awful because I think that in many ways we still blame ourselves. And another clip from the documentary Decade of Fire. Our families were setting roots down here, but our neighborhoods were being targeted by government policies based on race. It started with redlining. Redlining, when this first starts in the 1930s, any neighborhood that has five, ten percent black or Puerto Rican population is seen as a declining neighborhood. The federal housing agencies, banks, insurance companies, they start taking maps and literally drawing lines around them um, based on which neighborhoods are a good risk and which ones are bad. If a neighborhood had a red line drawn around it, it's a bad bet. Don't give a loan there, don't give out homeowner's insurance, fire insurance. That was another excerpt from Decade of Fire. Gretchen Hildebrand, how'd you get involved in this film and why'd you feel so important to make it? Right. Um, thank you so much for having us today. Um, so Vivian um, and another co-producer of ours, Julia, came to me um, shortly after I had moved to New York. Um, so I'm not a New Yorker, and I was really stunned to hear, start hearing this story of what happened in the Bronx, and um, also felt really fortunate to be able to meet Vivian and begin to start working with her and her community, um, just sitting around talking about, you know, what life was like in the, you know, back in the 70s, and for positive and negative. Um, and really, as we got further into it, I think one of our main goals with this was to try and break open policies like redlining and make them really accessible to people, because we really see a direct connection between those policies, you know, that were that were, have been going on since the 1930s and the cities we live in today. Um, and really wanting to give those uh, the policy, open it up to people as a tool, as a way to understand um, why we have such a crisis of displacement and gentrification in cities today. And, and uh, Vivian, I wanted to ask you, Charlotte Street and the South Bronx became the symbol of urban decay in the 70s and the 80s. Jimmy Carter went there, Ronald Reagan went there. They were all talking about re rebuilding these areas. But people stayed, like you, mm -hmm. and the, the renaissance of, of the Bronx right, right now is due to those people who stayed behind. So 
In the film, you see the real creative resistance of people that stayed and uh, fought and sacrificed their lives, everything they had, to save their building, their block, uh, their neighborhood. You have people like Ramon Rueda from the People's Development Corporation, who, you know, automatically saw that we had the resource of human beings and empty buildings. Let's just bring those two together and figure out how we can rebuild the housing. You have the Potts family and, you know, uh, Robert Foster and Hope Foster, who, together with folks from Banana Kelly, decided that they were going to rebuild an entire block. You had women like Hetty Fox, who came from California, actually, after, you know, visiting her father and decided that she was going to stay and save her neighborhood and prevent her block from burning. Hers is one of the only blocks in the South Bronx that did not burn, because and she how, was there. How mm -hmm. are these residents being protected today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, today, we're not experiencing the massive, destructive force of fire uh, physically, but the conditions of displacement and the, the threat of displacement in the South Bronx is grave. We are now, you know, very afraid of displacement uh, because of gentrification. So it's those same neighborhoods, and it's not just in the South Bronx, but if you look at all those neighborhoods across the country that were redlined and were, uh, you know, starved of resources back in the 60s and 70s, they're the same neighborhoods that are being gentrified today, and where people cannot afford to pay their rent, where people are being evicted, where people are being, uh, you know, um, harassed by landlords and are, forced, are being forced to move out. We're going to go to part two of this discussion after the show. We're going to post online at democracynow.org. Vivian Vasquez Idizari and Gretchen Hildebrand, co-directors of Decade of Fire. The documentary airs beginning Monday on PBS, Independent Lens. That does it for our show. Democracy Now! currently accepting applications for paid six-month internships here in New York. Go to democracynow.org for details. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez, our website, democracynow.org.